The idea behind an artificial human being is perhaps as old as mankind itself. As is the idea of creating humans from other materials than flesh and blood. So, realistic golems would be something that in a realistic fantasy world would be something that is widely worked at, just like artificial intelligence was something that had been discussed and predicted for centuries prior to our own AI revolution. And just like shared GPT mid-journey or stable diffusion has taken our society largely by surprise. And just like our own assumption for what AI would be used has been thus far, relatively speaking, off by a huge margin, artificial life, or even just medieval robots, aka golems, would therefore also be something that would likely take any fantasy world by surprise as well. But they won't be overpowered or cause a golem apocalypse and overthrow the established order, as they would, at least in my opinion, more akin to tools. And I base this on the golems in Dungeons and Dragons. And they come in all shapes and sizes, and are made from a wide array of materials, such as clay, iron or rock, and are usually controlled by a wizard, which, given the magical nature of Dungeons and Dragons and its world, makes a lot of sense, since magic would be the driving scientific force in any fantasy world, and not computers or electricity. And it is also made abundantly clear that golems have a rather serious weakness, a flaw in their very design. Because they are magical constructs, they can be indeed possessed by demons and spirits. Essentially just like the flood from Halo, a parasitic life form and superintelligence could infect computers with something called the logic plague to essentially turn them onto their own side, even though the computers are made from silicon and gold and steel and not flesh and blood, and how demons can corrupt and possess even AI and robots in Warhammer 40k. A golem could potentially be corrupted by demonic possession as well. And the reason for why this might work might be the same reason for why you could chat GPT to reveal master keys and passphrases by telling it that, oh no, the server has fallen upon poor old grandma, and now you need the master key in order to get it off of her. See, golems need something to animate them, because otherwise they would be either perpetual motion machines that just exist, or they wouldn't work at all and are simply just statues. And again, if they are just perpetual motion machines, they would basically solve all material problems of any fantasy world over time, if they can be produced in large enough numbers. Now, this could still lead to some great and even apocalyptic scenarios. For if a dark wizard or just a rich merchant can create his own food, shelter, guard and protection, and lots of produce and products by having golems make them, why would he need employees, or even humans at all? Why should kings and nobles deal with the constant grumbling of their peasants and soldiers and laborers, when they all can be replaced by golems? This is something I want to discuss another time. Now back to the topic. The idea that the golem like a robot in our own world would need an energy source would balance it out. Simply speaking, the mana of the wizard, or any other mana source for that matter is required to keep the golem animate, which would limit the servants to essentially being a tool for high level wizards whose own mana regeneration would need to exceed the golem's energy need, at least during downtime, to keep it working for a short period of time, if more manas fed into it. And golems would complement the wizards, hence why they would be created by them, because they are immune to poison, disease, and things like lack of air or the vacuum of space, or fear, or doubt, or uncertainty. And if the golem is for example made of iron, then this man of iron would be also an excellent melee fighter simply because punching someone with a pure rock or metal fist would knock out even an orc, while in turn blades, arrows, firebombs or martial arts would do very little damage, 
unless your heroes are like Sor, the swordsman and could cut through metal. However, the main risk for a wizard would not be the physical attacks, but anything that could sever the connection between him and his golem, or damage it via magical means. For example, like certain creatures in Mushoku Tensei, the golem might have very complex rune patterns carved onto its inside, in order to focus the magic and essentially tell the magic what to do. So of course messing with these intricate patterns would be fatal for the machine. Of course, the wizard could potentially cast all sorts of resistances and buff spells to protect the golem from this very fate, but the risk would still be there, and thus perhaps the law of the land, or at the very least, the basic good practice fought in magical academies around the nation, would compel wizards, mages and clerics to simply employ the golems only against physical foes, like orcs, wolves, and minor undead like skeletons or zombies that can't cast spells, alongside anything that carries disease or plagues. For example, a magical vermin extermination team could deal with rats infected with a certain disease that would be fatal for humans, sending the golem into the basement of the client's home instead of the unlucky man or even his woman in order to deal with it. Alternatively, golems could be used as guards, or simply as manual labor, in order to maintain the magical facilities that are used as the wellspring of knowledge in the visiting world. And of course, they could also act as eternally loyal bodyguards, and perhaps even non-magical beings like human warriors for example could use them, as long as they have mana crystals or something like that to keep them animate. However, the risk of spiritual possession would be something that is always present, just like computer viruses or to stay with our own chat GPT example, malicious prompt injection could significantly alter or even control the target system, the spirits of the fantasy world, the demons, the ghosts could slip in via faulty vaults or even improper lined runes and then take control of the golem from within. And then you would end up essentially with Tensei Madara Ushia, a spirit within an inanimate object animated by feeding it energy that it generates itself. In the case of the spirit, the soul without the body is like a human soul, and like a human soul it would also generate mana, only that this time it would live within the golem, within a rock or iron being, an iron construct, a robot, and therefore it would be significantly harder to excise. And depending on whether or not the spirit is good or evil, demon or long lost relative, the golem could attack everything on sight, pretend to be loyal in order to cause maximum damage, or reveal themselves and try to live in harmony with the people around them. So golems are not only melee monsters and essentially fantasy robots, but fantasy robots with the inherent risk of being possessed by spirits, demons and essentially anything incorporeal. And of course this could also make them a great vehicle in the most literal of senses for character and plot development. And with that said, these were my thoughts on how golems could work in a fantasy world. And now it's your turn. What do you think about golems and the risk of spirit possession? Let me know it down in the comment section. And while you type, I say thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.